Good evening and welcome to you all to our service of evening prayer on Saturday the 15th of August. I'm hopeful we've sorted out the gremlins from this morning. However, if the service goes off in the middle of the service, don't panic. I'll try to get back online as soon as possible and we may have evening prayer in two parts. But hopefully we should be okay. Those could be famous last words, of course. Today we have been remembering the Blessed Virgin Mary on this her feast day and giving thanks for her um, obedience to God and for bearing Jesus in the world. And today of course is also Victory in Japan Day which brought to an end the hostilities uh, completely at the end of the Second World War. We've been remembering uh, that special day and for those who lost their lives in conflict and those who still serve today across our world in the forces. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. A song of God's light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not be afraid. And though there rise up war against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and that alone I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to seek his will in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall hide me in his shelter. In the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me, and set me high upon a rock. Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. So our evening prayer rises before you, O God. So may your mercy come down upon us and to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Our psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 132. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place. Lord, remember for David all the hardships he endured, how he swore an oath to the Lord, and vowed a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not come within the shelter of my house, nor climb up into my bed. I will not allow my eyes to sleep, nor let my eyelids slumber, until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. Now we heard of the ark in Ephrathah, and found it in the fields of Ja'ar. Let us enter his dwelling place and fall low before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness and your faithful ones sing with joy. For your servant David's sake, turn not away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn an oath to David a promise from which he will not shrink. Of the fruit of your body shall I set upon your throne. If your children keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their children, shall sit, shall, their children also shall sit upon your throne for evermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion for himself. He has desired her for his habitation. This shall be my resting place for ever. Here will I dwell, for I have longed for her. I will abundantly bless her provision. Her poor will I satisfy with bread. I will clothe her priest with salvation, and her faithful ones shall rejoice and sing. There will I make a horn to spring up for David, and I will keep a lantern burning for my anointed. As for his enemies, I will clothe them with shame. But on them shall his crown be, bought, be bright. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place. Jesus, son of David, make us a priestly people. Clothe us in righteousness. Make us fruitful 
and give us hearts to shout for joy in your salvation. We pray in the power of the Spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is from the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. I am a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. As a lily among brambles, so is my love among maidens. As an apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among young men. With great delight I sat in his shadow, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his intention towards me was love. Sustain me with raisins, refresh me with apples, for I am faint with love. Oh, that his left hand were under my head, and that his right hand embraced me. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or the wild does, do not stir up or awaken love until it is ready. Here ends our first reading. God's love was revealed among us, so that we might live through Jesus. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was revealed among us. For God sent his only Son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the expiation for our sins. Since God loves us so much, we also ought to love one another. For if we love one another, God abides in us, and God's love will be perfected in us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. God's love was revealed among us, so that we might live through Jesus. Our second reading is taken from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that your father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power and when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up to heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went into the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Here ends our second reading. The Magnificat, which of course is the song of Mary. Mary gave birth to the word of God. Truly she is the ever-blessed mother of Christ our Lord. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. From generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and 
and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Mary gave birth to the word of God. Truly she is the ever-blessed mother of Christ our Lord. So let us pray. So today as we give thanks for the Blessed Virgin Mary, for the way she answered yes to God when she was asked to bear Jesus. As we remember the Blessed Virgin Mary and her willingness to place her trust in God's call on her life, we pray for all those who nurture others in their faith, especially for Ruth Hassel and the discipleship team as they encourage and equip parishes across our diocese. We pray for all those churches and people dedicated to Mary and we thank you for the inspiration that she gives us in our lives as well. On this Victory in Japan Day, so we pray, God our Father, in the dying and rising of your Son Jesus Christ, you have brought life and salvation out of cruelty and death. We mark victory in Japan in gratitude for the courage of the Allied forces who suffered for freedom in the Far East campaign and in sorrow for all that hinders the coming of your kingdom of peace. Give us wisdom to learn from bitter memories of war and hearts that long for the unity of all nations. We ask this in the name of Jesus, in whom there is no east or west, north or south, but one fellowship of love across the whole world. Amen. We pray, Lord, for all those who have suffered because of warfare and conflict for those who suffered as prisoners of war, for those who gave the ultimate sacrifice of losing their lives in the freedom and service of others. We pray that we do learn those lessons and that there is an end to warfare and conflict across our world today. And we pray for those who continue to serve in the forces wherever they find themselves this day and for family and friends at home who miss them. Lord, we do pray for your gift of peace. For peace in our world, peace in our land, peace in our hearts. We pray for that great gift of reconciliation, of bringing people together, of building them up and turning away from that which divides us. We pray that there would be an end to those things that people use to judge others, that cause discrimination, that we may all be held in the love and the ever-encompassing love of God. So we pray for our town. We pray especially for the Methodist Church on Bright Street, for the vandalism that they have suffered, for the people there who've been preparing so hard to open their doors to welcome people tomorrow. We pray for their service that will still take place outside and we pray for those who have to clean up, for those who have to deal with the shock and disappointment that this has happened. We pray for all our churches across Darwin, for those of us who will be opening our doors tomorrow for those who will be joining us in person and online, for the many different ways that we now worship together. And we thank you, Lord, that we are able to do this. We continue to pray for our key workers, for those who've been going out to work today and those who've worked from home. We pray for those who continue to be furloughed and for those who've lost their employment. We pray for those who've been able to return to work today or are planning to return to work this coming week. We pray, Lord, that you would ease their anxieties and fears that they may feel at this time. We 
continue to pray especially for the work of the National Health Service and all those who work across med medical professions in the different roles and responsibilities that they have. Those that are up front and on the front line and those who work behind the scenes to support them. We pray for our hospitals and hospices, for our care homes and those who work out in the community. We pray for those who work in our health centres and pharmacies and all who provide care for those in need. And so we bring to you, Lord, those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, for those who are in need of your healing touch, praying especially for Bridget, Charlie, Wendy, Lisa, David, Morris, Margaret, Joyce, Mary, Marion, Joyce, Irene, Jeff, Edna, Alan and Andrew. Lord, be with them and with those who care for them. We pray also for those who have died, for those who have died this past day and those who have watched and waited by their side. We pray for those who are nearing the end of their life and for all those who mourn. We pray for those who have died recently and those whose anniversaries occur at this time. We pray that through the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus, we may trust in your promise of eternal life for us all and that one day we will be reunited with our loved ones who have gone before us. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, that they may obtain their petitions, make them ask such things as shall please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for this continuous service of evening prayer tonight. Um, it's been lovely to have your company. Tomorrow is, of course, Sunday. We will be keeping the 10th Sunday after Trinity tomorrow. And our services are at 9 o'clock and half past 10. And our half past 10 service will be live streamed to our Facebook page. The order of service, if you don't receive it by email, it can be found on both our website and on our Church Near You page, if you are able to join us. And tomorrow evening, we have a service of evening prayer at 5 o'clock. In the meantime, do stay safe, keep well, look after yourselves and um, you remain as always in my prayers. Take care.